Hello and welcome to C Programming Zero to Neural Networks. Today we're covering strings and uh, strings are basically sequences of characters. So um, letters, we're dealing with letters here. And uh, well, let's get straight to it, let's go through it. So we'll make a file called strings.c. We'll include the standard input output library, create a main function and return a zero to the operating system. So what's a string? Well, we've already covered character arrays. So let's remind ourselves of what a character array is. We can do car, um, array, open, close, square brackets, equals, open, close, um, curly braces, and then in here we can put characters. We can put like D, um, C, B, A, and we can do that. We can make a character array in this. This array will become of size four, and it will hold uh, a capital A, a capital B, a capital C, and a capital D. And we can print that out just to confirm it. We can use the percent %s to represent a string in our printf um, placeholder, and we can just do array, printf array. And we get a, b, c, d. So that's a string of characters, but um, really this is a character array. It's not actually a string. To save a bit of all this notation syntax, we can do a shorthand way of uh, uh, sort of assigning our character array. We use this double quote notation. So anything between double quotes is a string. And uh, we can do A, B, C, D. In fact, we'll do my string. Uh, anything between double quotes is a string. So what we're doing here is we're creating a character array um, called array, um, and we're assigning it the string my string. The, well, as it we're assigning it a string, and, in, and that string contains the letters my string. And this will uh, now work exactly the same way. And uh, there we go, so that's a string. A string isn't um, a character array, a string is this bit here between the double quotes. And uh, we can assign a string to a character array. So that's an important concept to, to consider. Now, a character array is read-write. So we can do array at position zero equals, and we can change that to an A, for example. And now when we run the program, we've got I string, A string. Um, because this is just a no normal um, array which is stored in the data section RL file, read write memory. There's another way we can create strings. So let's get rid of that. We can, um, let's, oh, we'll change that in a second. We can do a car pointer and we can call this maybe str equals and sign that a string. So we can call this, let's call it new string. And we can print this out as well. So exactly the same as before. Well, oh, I've gone for the old colon instead of semicolon. And we get the same result. So you might at first glance think these are similar things, but they're actually completely different things. So this here is what we refer to in C parlance as a string literal. It's not a character array, it's a string literal. One of the differences between a character array and a string literal, let's say I do string literal, just like we did before, and change this to an A. The program will probably compile, but when I try and run it, segfault core dumped. Why has that happened? It's happened because I'm trying to write to a read-only memory address. This is a string literal, which is not stored in our data section RL file. It is stored in the read-only data. In fact, we refer to string literals as being stored somewhere in memory. That's actually the, uh, the proper terminology that we use because it's not really relevant where they're stored. Now, what we can do is this another string. Now, you might think that what we're doing here is overwriting that this string with a new string. And, and it will work, it's another string, but we're not doing that. What we're doing is we're now pointing to an entirely new string literal in memory that we've just created called another string. So we've abandoned this new string and we've created a new uh, another string in memory and we're just now pointing this variable to that new string, to that different string. So to understand this, we have a thumbnail here that I made. Um, so car star string equals my string, just like we've made. So what does that look like in memory? So somewhere in, this is a pointer to a character. This is not a, um, a character array, it's just a pointer. It's an eight byte pointer to a location in memory. And it points to the beginning of the string. So in this case, it points to the letter M. And uh, when we read that string, when we print it out, we just one by one, read one letter at a time until we hit this guy here, which is a null termination character. And at that point, the string is terminated. So 
So when we create any of these strings, the um, even though we haven't put it in, the compiler places this guy at the end of this string, this slash backslash zero, which represents a null termination character. So when we read the string, basically we start reading at the first letter and we read all the way until we hit that null termination character and that's, that represents the end of the string. And uh, we, um, as I said, we can't, we, can't, um, we can't write to this in memory because uh, this, all this memory here, this block of memory, this is part of the read-only memory section of our program. If we try and write to it, we'll call it, cause a seg fault because we're not allowed to write to that part of memory. So that about does it for the two different types of string. Now, you might think you could do this. Um, say we've got two strings. So str1, str2 equals another string. So we've got two strings. What if we did if str1 equals str2? So we're like comparing them. Uh, we might you might think that they're comparing that uh, the two contents of these strings, but that's actually not what's going on here. Once again, these guys here, these are pointers to a character. So these are memory addresses. These are eight byte memory addresses that um, that refer to memory locations. They're not the actual string themselves. So we're comparing two memory locations here. So we can't do an if str1, str2, if string one if string uh, is equal to string two. That's not comparing the two strings. We have to use, to do things like this in the C program language, we have to import the uh, string library. So let's do that. We have to include the string.h library, I've missed an I string.h library and then we can use functions in the string.h library like strcmp which are string is this is the string compare function and we can look up how that works as well so it returns an int it takes a const car pointed to a string one const car pointed to a string two so it takes two strings and it returns a zero if they're two equal so if we want to compare if two strings are the same str1 str to, we have to use this string compare function and there's lots of other string functions as well we can do str cat where we can um, uh, concatenate two strings together basically add them together and make a new string but for that we need to have a destination which is a, a character array something we can write to so we need to make a, a character buffer to do that we can't we, once again we can't change these we can't modify these so we'd have to make a, a buffer to do that we also have str len this is a very useful function with that we'll, we'll do an example for this so we'll do printf percent d str len str1 now we get a 10 as an output one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This str len returns the string length, the length of a string, which is very useful uh, in lots of ways, and uh, is a very handy function that we use a lot of. And there are hundreds of other functions in the string.h library. And um, string handling is frustrating in the C programming language. I shall give you, I shall warn you now. Um, it's uh, it's not as easy as it is in other programming languages where we can just throw around strings and do all kinds of operations on them. With a C programming language, most of the things that you're going to want to do it with strings are in the string.h library. If you want to do any more, anything more than just create a string and store it somewhere, if you want to start comparing strings and adding strings, we have loads of others. We have strdup, which duplicates a string, string duplicate. And uh, I won't go through them all, just to get the idea that most of the things that you want to do with the strings are going to be in the string.h library. And things that might seem obvious, like comparing two strings, like I would, I think in JavaScript you can just do if this string equals that string. Well, you can't do that in the C programming language. You have to use the strcmp. And then there's the strncmp, which differs slightly, and we compare just a part of a string, just like maybe the first four letters of a string, and see if it's equal to the first four letters in another string. Um, and we've got a separate function for that, strncmp, and so on, and so on, and so on. So that's an introduction to strings in a, in the C programming language. They are these are these are strings to recap. So the string bit is this bit here, the between the double quote, quotes, and then this what we're creating here is a pointer to a string literal, which is going to be stored in memory somewhere. And we've also got 
character arrays where we can assign some letters to a character array and this array is going to become of that size. What we often do is have a car uh, buffer and uh, we might set that to 1024. And then this will give us somewhere to write to. So we can grab a string literal and write it to the buffer and that kind of thing. So this is, a, this is often a design pattern that we use where we use a character buffer if we're going to be manipulating strings and moving strings around. It's better to just, when it comes to these kind of things, to as I, as I go through more and more advanced programs and actually do more applied programming, um, I will, uh, I'll go through these as and when they come up. Um, and uh, we definitely need to cover pointers in a bit more detail. But you get the idea for, for, um, for this example. This car pointed to a string is just pointing to this first letter, it's just pointing to the first letter of this string. And when we try and read it, we'll, with something like printf, we read until we hit this special character here, which is the null termination character, which is backslash O. And that's it, that covers strings. Well, that covers as much of strings as we can do for an introduction. And uh, we'll be using strings a little bit more, so we'll find out more about them as we go through this series. Um, they're not gonna be a huge part of neural networks, but it's important to understand strings for, for formatting output and um, for printing out error messages and that kind of thing. So they are, they are very handy. Um, and um, if you want to go in a, uh, by building large language models. If we end up getting that far in this series or we're building our own LLM, and I would certainly hope we do get there, then uh, we're going to need to do a bit of string handling, aren't we? <laughs> right, I will see you next time. Goodbye.